Happy Monday, everyone. So excited to be here today. Super psyched to chat with Jen from Nova Mercury. Um, her fiber work has inspired me and many people for um, many, many years. So I'm really psyched to chat with Jen today. Um, really psyched to get everybody in the in the chat here. So hello, hello. I see you all joining. Yay! Um, we're gonna have a lot of a lot of fun today because as you may or may not know, if you follow Jen's work, it is amazing i could just dive right into it and kind of like live and swim inside all of her fiber pieces it's amazing so we're gonna get jen right in here and get chatting here we go hello everyone thank you all for joining again too i'm sarah krieski your host of our instagram live chat today hi jen hi sarah how are you doing i'm really good how are you oh good God, good I matching hair yes i love it you have the cutest little pigtails ever the little braids are adorable i love it tiny they're, they're perfect there's there's nothing i would change about it i also really love your background because it's like the best palette ever i'm obsessed right i love it i love it well welcome welcome i'm so psyched to chat today so happy you're here oh thanks for having me yeah, Happy can you, um, for everybody that doesn't know who you are, which would be shocking, but um, for anybody that doesn't already follow your work, can you just tell us a little bit about you, what kind of art you make, and then the origin story of your Instagram handle? <laughs> sure. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Um, my name is Jen Deppin. I am a fiber artist who lives in Montreal, Quebec. And I make fiber art. So I make um, mostly weaving, uh, loom weaving, but I also do macrame, punch needle. Um, I love color. <laughs> so that's sort of what I'm known for mostly. And um, yeah, my, my business name is Nova Mercury. And it is named after my youngest child. So beautiful. And remind us how many kiddos you have? I have two kids. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> but I started Has Nova has Nova ever like picked out the colors for a weaving and you've done one like completely inspired by her colors? Um, they have for sure like their own weavings. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. They both have done some weaving before. So they've definitely picked out their own col colors for their own work. Um, I don't know that I've actually ever done a weaving where they've chosen the colors, but that would be fun. That would be kind of fun. I love yeah. it. Like you get to pick six colors, whatever your heart desires yep. and see what they, what they gravitate towards. I think that would be interesting. That. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, okay, so we're kind of talking about process already a little bit. And your weavings are so beautiful, so eye catching, especially from, um, you know, up close, you can see those little details, but far away, they almost look like fiber paintings. They're amazing. So can you tell us just a little bit about the process for how you actually make your pieces? Like, how do you how do you select your colors? How do you pick your textures? Do you do a sketch first? What does that look like for you, Jen? Right? Well, thank you. It's really nice of you to say. Um, my process is honestly like really intuitive. So nice. I usually do not sketch. Um, I do sketch if I'm working with a client on a commission. So if I'm doing a custom piece for someone, I will sketch and like send drawings back and forth. But for my own work, um, my inspiration really is color. Like I'm very, very inspired by my materials. So color and texture, like you said. Mm -hmm. So often I will just like dig around in my stash and just pull, pull things that that speak to me and I arrange them on a table and play around with them and that's sort of how I choose my palette and my materials sometimes I'll use a reference of um like perhaps there's like a photograph or an illustration where the color combination inspired me and I and I will look to that as a reference um mm -hmm. but my color choosing is often pretty intuitive and it's just honestly what I like I love it I, I mean yeah. That's the that's the best kind of art to make is one where you're yeah. like, well, I kind of want this and I love it and yeah. I'm enjoying making it. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love, I really love, I love bright colors and I love mixing colors. I obviously make rainbow art. A lot of people know my rainbow pieces, but um, I just, I've always loved color, like since I was a kid. So it's just always appealed to me. Um, and it is one of my biggest inspirations. And in terms of like making my pieces, um, it's the same thing. Sometimes I'll have an idea in my head of what I want it to look like, but I would say my making process is very organic as well. Um, and I just sort of get working at my loom and I, I see where my materials 
take me. So yeah, Love sometimes it. it it looks like it does in my head, but <laughs> most often it doesn't. And it's like a, and that's a okay. nice surprise at the end. And that's how it turned out. Yeah, totally. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I love that too, because as an art educator, we it's an, it's nice to model that for students too, is knowing that sometimes your plan goes great. Sometimes your plan edits a little bit and you like it more. You know, it like it's constantly this ever moving, ever morphing, changing plan. And so it's nice to speak to artists that are making a living and creating work where it's like, no, it doesn't have to be completely structured in exactly how you anticipate. And that's okay. I got to ask, what's yeah. your favorite color, Jen? Do you have like a favorite? I cannot choose. <laughs> what's today's favorite color? Right. Well, right now I'm really into like, like really neon hot pink. Like yes. it's yes. really just speaking to me right now. And I use it in a lot of pieces I'm making. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm obsessed. Yeah. I feel like I, I didn't realize how much I loved pink until recently. And I was like, I think pink is my favorite color, but I never realized it. Yeah. But like a bright color with a super neutral, like a mustard and a, and a fluorescent is like, mm, so yeah. delicious. Totally. I love it. It's, it speaks to me. <laughs> <laughs> and you, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk just a little bit about when you finish a piece and you feel proud of what you've created, what kinds of either emotions or what kinds of things do you want your viewers to see and think and feel? Um, what would you, what would you kind of want them to, to feel when they see your work? Well, I, I, I mean, it's funny cause I don't want to tell anyone how to feel like you'll of feel course. however it makes you feel. I definitely try to make work that is joyful. Like that's a word I use a lot. Um, like color brings me joy and I think my art is joyful and most people I think interpret it that way. So I always want to make pieces that because most of my artwork goes to people's homes. Right. Um, it's usually like private people, private collectors in their homes who buy my artwork. Um, and I just, my goal is always that it just brings people happiness. Like yeah, it's really it. that simple. Yeah. I want them to look at it and smile and feel good and, and then weavings, I think, are, are great. Like fiber art's having such a big resurgence right now, but fiber art is just such a really nice way to add like warmth and texture to your decor in your home. It just, they're yeah. like cozy and they feel good and they're interesting and you want to touch them. So like, yeah. it's, it's such an interesting piece of art to hang in your space and it always creates good conversation when we can have friends over again <laughs> right of course of course and I love that you mentioned I love that you mentioned too like the tactile sort of like wanting to touch it because certainly I know students love doing that too but like anytime I see a weaving in particular like a painting or a print you're like oh that's cool but I maybe don't need to like stick my fingers in it but a, a weaving is like you want to dive in because it's so so textural and I feel that with your your pieces too um what do you feel like is the the biggest texture push you've had as far as like um, let me think of how I'm trying to ask this. Like, you know how a, a painting from the side or a piece from the side might only be like an inch or two thick. Do you feel like you'll ever start like really pushing that, um, that depth a little bit so it comes off like super far? Or do you like how tight and textured they are? Um, some of my pieces have a lot of texture. So it's interesting when you look at them from the front, especially if you're just seeing a photograph of it, the the depth of the texture may not be evident and unless you actually saw it in person. I sometimes try to photograph my pieces sort of from the side so you can yeah, see yeah. how much they stick off the wall. Yeah. Um, I just finished a piece a, a couple months ago for a client. Um, it's on my Instagram if anyone wants to see it, but it's really like a 40 inch circle and it's all rhinox, but it was about this thick when it was finished. That's amazing. And it's just like, I just couldn't stop putting my hands on it. It was so lush and yeah, yeah it's like so attractive to me why I'm a texture person so I like touching things too but yeah I love totally. it yeah I so love most it. of my pieces have quite a bit of, of texture and they're all like poofy and I work with roving a lot which is like unspun wool um and it's quite thick and it has so much texture so it's it's really beautiful in, in a space yeah it definitely it, you definitely feel that that it's kind of coming at you a little bit too you're almost part of the piece because of the fact that it's not so flat right yeah. is it really kind of becomes part of the space a little bit too. I love that. Yeah. So let, let's just chat about, cause we are, I'm obsessed with the yarn behind you and we already talked about like favorite colors, <laughs> but for those um, people, obviously you create these really amazing kits for people that want to try their hand at weaving or do classes. And you offer so many amazing resources for people that are interested in 
either advancing their skills or trying from not knowing much at all. So can you tell us where you like to gather your materials from? What are your favorite places to support? Um, and then for people that don't know much about weaving, how can they get into that? Well, weaving is like a huge, big wide world. Like there's so much to learn and there's so many different kinds of weaving. Um, I do frame loom weaving, which is like a great introduction. So if you wanna learn to weave, it's very simple and accessible. Um, I sell like small frame looms in my shop. Actually, I sell them in kits and they come with everything you need, including an ebook, a little ebook that I wrote that instructs you through the process. So um, if you want to learn picking up a kit, either from me or from someone else, because other people make them too, is a, a really great way to learn. Normally, I always tell people to take workshops, but workshops right now can be tricky. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely learning from a kit or from an online class. Um, I'm actually hosting three workshops this month online. I haven't done any since everything <laughs> shut down. I just kind of was like, I'm going to wait, but it seems like it's going to be a while. So um, <laughs> I will have more workshops scheduled too. So if somebody wants to learn with me, I would love to teach you. Um, I really, really, really love encouraging folks to um, tap into their create creative side. My favorite students are the ones who are not artistic ever. And I, I, I really have a lot of fun working with folks who sort of discover their creativity through a craft or through a medium that they've may maybe never tried before. Mm -hmm. um, weaving has just been like the greatest gift in my life. And I, I just absolutely love sharing it with people so, so much. Um, so yeah, that's really fun. But there's so many places that you can learn. Um, it's pretty easy right now because a lot of folks are weaving, yeah. <laughs> especially during COVID. So, um, and in terms of supplies, it's hard to say because I get my supplies from so many different places and there's a lot of supplies out there. So you can start, you know, um, if you're just learning, like a great place to start is just your local craft store because usually you can get yarns at a pretty affordable price just to allow you to practice. And then you can build up your your stash or your collection over time. Mm -hmm. um, I really just encourage people to, to try as many different materials as they can, because like what I like may not be what you like, and you might like something totally different. Um, I think a huge part of being creative and being an artist is just practicing and just trying as many things as you can just to figure out what your style is, what you like, what your, what your artistic voice is. So practice, practice. That's what I, what I always <laughs> say to everybody. Just, do it as much as you can. Yeah, that is that is great advice. I love it. And so, okay, so how many pieces do you usually have working at one time? Is that a, <laughs> can you even answer that? Right now, yeah, I right now like not more than one at a time. Oh, okay, yeah. you know, I'm usually working on like I like to do one piece at a time. I'm a really um, uh, when I start something, I finish it. So like nice. when I start working on a piece, I will work on it until it's done. Um, and right now I'm working through custom orders for clients. So usually I have a list of orders to make and I make one at a time. Sometimes I have a couple pieces on the go, or if I'm doing a lot of custom work, um, I often have a personal project on the side cause I always like to just have a creative project just for myself. Yeah, completely. That's how my brain works, but, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to stay organized right now and just keep it to like one at a time. So I don't get overwhelmed. Honestly, Jen, I'm super impressed with that because I feel like sometimes it's hard to just like, at least my brain just goes all over the place and I have like 19 things at one time. So yeah. I love it. I have a lot of respect for that. And I think too, <laughs> sometimes I, it's nice also to remember that yes, you can be working on things for clients and, and doing commission pieces, but it's also fun to hear, yeah, I'm kind of doing things for myself as well. And what do I want to be working on and how do I want to express myself creatively? Yeah. Um, Missy Jackson in the chat just said um, that it's really good for mental health, <laughs> specifically weaving. Um, I also love, um, I've been just talking about like couch crafts, like craft maybe isn't the right word in that, in that scenario, but like something you can do while you're just like sitting and chilling that keeps your hands moving. So yep. it's fun to have like a couch craft and weaving and fiber arts is like perfect for that. Yeah, definitely. It's very, uh, weaving really requires you to be, well, like most art practices do, but it's, it really requires you to be in the moment and really like attentive to what you're doing. So it almost for me, like doubles as a mindfulness practice. Yeah. So yeah, um, it just helps me like really be present and focused and it's super relaxing. So yeah, yeah. I totally would recommend it for just relaxation too. <laughs> and it's very like, 
it can be really repetitive in certain ways or more organic. And just weaving in general is like just the touch, the tactile, the feel, the colors. It's like you're already just kind of in your own meditation space. It's amazing. So yeah. let's let's talk just a little bit about so you already feel relatively relaxed, hopefully when you're weaving. I know this might speak to a lot of people who are maybe looking for a way to express themselves creatively, but what do you feel like is a, and of course this changes from person to person, but what kind of like vibe do you like to have in your studio? Like what do you listen to? What kind of like vibe do you set up that you're like, this is how I'm gonna be successful today? Um, my studio, like when I'm sitting down to work, I, I really just like to, I'm like a pretty organized person. So I have like admin and work days and then I have like weaving days. So I sort of clear my schedule. So I'm just weaving. So I have all my stuff set up. I like to get my loom ready like the night before. So I'm ready to go. And I'm usually yes. listening to like a audiobook or a podcast. And nice. then I just, like I said, I just sort of oh. have blinders on and just work without stopping. <laughs> That's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Cause I get it. Like, I'm sure other folks can relate, but I sort of get into like a creative zone and I'm just really in it. So yeah. I usually block days for weaving and that's sort of what my studio life. And then I have other days where I'm like doing computer work and making weaving kits and stuff, which is more our busy work in my, those days are really different. But when I'm like weaving, it's, it's very focused and it's like kind of all, I just tune out the whole world when I'm doing it. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the mind of an artist and of a, of a working artist is never just creating art the whole time. Like you're a businesswoman as well. And you have to balance yeah. that, like <laughs> making, yeah. making people pieces that they can then get into their home. There's so much that goes into that and um, balancing. It sounds like something that constantly takes that practice too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I have to ask, you said you listen to like audiobooks and podcasts and I always love like I feel like it just gives you a little insight into the person to like what they're listening to. So can, yeah. do you mind sharing like some of your favorite podcasts or books you've listened to? Um, oh, well, podcasts are so many because I listen <laughs> to a lot. But um, I just finished uh, Brandy Carlisle's audiobook, Broken Horses, Ooh. which was her uh, memoir. And it was amazing. And she sings at the end of every chapter, which, just, oh my which gosh. is why I audiobooked it. But it, it was a beautiful story. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I like a lot of memoir, down. pop culture stuff. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I love it. That I feel like that just like, it's just a little insight into like, what does the person yeah. kind of feel like makes them, you know, makes them feel comfy and makes them like excited to listen. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's just discuss too, because be, you know, when you're creating work, you said you're really inspired by color and you're sometimes just pulling from different imagery that you see or things that kind of call to you. Are there any artists in particular that you really often are just like, these these artists inspire me, fiber artists, painters, sculptors, anybody that you're just like, I just really love their work and they, they help to inspire me to be, uh, you know, a creative artist? Yeah, it's... <laughs> Kind of like the podcast. There's so many. That I know. Like, it's hard to list. Yeah. And there's there's so many fiber artists that I really admire. Um, but I try to not spend too much time looking at other fiber art because it can influence my own work. And I, I try to keep, especially with social media, so I don't follow a ton of fiber artists. Um, sure. More for people that I'm friends with and I'm in community with. But um, artists, um, well, okay, somebody who is... Um, an artist a contemporary artist right now is um it's bisa butler she's an mm. american uh quilt artist um, yes. her work right now i think is just some of the most engaging and stunning i have seen in a really long time um her use of color is just like magnificent how she pieces materials together um mm -hmm. if you don't know her work please go check her out because she's yes. <laughs> totally astounding her one of her pieces on the cover of essence right now too so if you go to a magazine store you can see one of her quilt works like i saw it the other day on the magazine and it was just so stunning yes. um i also really love <laughs> i love children's books uh children books yes yes <laughs> oh, I that. um children's illustrators and i I have kids, but I just think that um, kids' books right now are, like, experiencing this incredible renaissance, and they're so fantastic. So I look at a lot of illustrations for inspiration, and Carson Ellis is one of my favorite um, mm -hmm. artists, and I just love her artwork and her approach to writing and illustrating for, for kids and everybody, too. So I love it. Um, people that I like, yeah. <laughs> 
inspiration is all around us as always, right? Is what, yes, <laughs> what are we drawn to and how do we pull that into our own sort of artistic expression? Yes. yes, I love it. Those are great suggestions, absolutely. Um, and, and it's, especially Bisa's work I know is very uh, similar in the way that it feels like from far away. It's like that sort of painting, bold, beautiful, um, colorful imagery. And then as you get closer, it's like, oh, wow, there's so much intricacy here. Yeah. Uh, very similar to your work, too, where you can really just look in it and dive close. And then from far away, it has this whole different feel. It's really, it's really <laughs> fun. It's fun to see. <laughs> I don't think my work compares to hers, but it's very good. <laughs> but, I, but I mean, in the way that it's, it looks, you know, you have this different feel from far away as you do from close, which Stay happens close with out, a lot yeah. of work, too. But yeah. um, it can be really fun. So can you tell us a little bit about, I mean, you said you've created many, many pieces and you constantly have um, pieces on your Etsy shop and other places that people can buy um, work from you. But can you tell us, are there any pieces that you're just like, you really love and it will continue to be your favorite piece? That, you know, I don't get, um, I don't get super attached to my pieces. That's probably so good. <laughs> I, I feel like the, jo the joy I get out of them is in making them is like the creation process. And then once they're made, I'm really happy to let them go out and in, out into the world. I definitely have some that have been like really fun to make. Um, I love collaborating with clients on ideas that like I maybe wouldn't have thought of. So like yeah. when a client comes to me with an idea they have and they like my style, but they, they have their idea. Um, for example, there's a piece I made um, as like a landscape piece. It's quite large. It's also on my feed if you want to see it, but um that was the client's idea. She came to me, uh, she inherited an old farmhouse in Vermont and wanted a piece made to go in one of the rooms to sort of represent the like landscape in Vermont. Oh, yeah. um, and it's one of my most like liked pieces and it always gets so much love whenever I share a photo of it. But like, I don't know that I ever would have done that on my own without yeah. her idea, but it's still very much my style and I had so much fun making it. So those like collaborations with other folks are, are super fun. So yeah, and I'm really open to doing work that isn't necessarily in what I already do. So I, I, yeah. like, I like when people come to me with different ideas. It's like challenging. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah, I love that. And, and because you're the artist that makes it, it's going to have an element of Jen to it, right? Because it's made by your hand. So naturally, it's going to be in your style. But it's fun to just sort of give that little extra push. Like, oh, I wouldn't do this on my own. But I can be re like, I'm really excited about the way it turned out, because it's not something I would initially think to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you have any, so if we're speaking about favorites, favorite pieces, things like that, do you have any favorite stitches or like knots or anything that you're just like, I love using this. I use it all the time. Favorite techniques. Well, I really, I really like working with roving. Like I said, so this puffy roving is sort of a signature of mine. And a lot of my pieces feature that. So I, I really like working with roving. It's just, yeah so much texture and it's so squishy and good and I have a really big assortment of it so I have all the colors I need so that's probably my favorite and a technique that I use the most but I always like um I always like learning and trying new things and I don't like um feeling like you know I need to stick to one style so sometimes I'll just get an urge to try something totally different and yeah I feel like um you just always need to be um I just always need to be learning and growing too so yeah yeah, I, I love that. And you, it sounds like modeling that great artist mindset, too, is knowing, we, you know, we don't need to be stuck in one particular style, one particular way, one particular um, thing to create is that it's kind of this ever evolving um, way to live, right? And, and way to create work. So I love that. Yeah. When you do your roving, Jen, do you do you follow any type of like specific looping pattern? Or is that more of like an intuitive or organic um structured element to your weavings no it's super organic and most cool. of my weaving is pretty organic so it's yeah. like I I just feel it out as I'm working on the piece so yeah uh, and I rarely do very structured or geometrical design sometimes I do because I like I, it's a challenge for me yeah it's for sure what I normally do or what I default to but um no it's usually just whatever I feel in the moment that's awesome that's the that's the epitome of intuition right is following yeah. your heart <laughs> yeah well oh, most of the people um that are following the art of ed are art educators i know there's a lot of people in watching the chat today and hopefully more will watch later too but a lot of us that are art teachers 
are inspired by your work and love sharing fiber artists with our students. Can you just talk a little bit about your experience as a young artist? What did it look like to, um, to be as a young artist in school? What was your experience? Can you just tell us about your art experience as a young kiddo? Yeah, well, um, I think I've always been an artist. <laughs> so yeah. when I was young, I made a lot of art all the time. It was probably my favorite thing to do. Um, I was in school quite a while ago now, so <laughs> my, my memory is maybe not the best. Um, but I, I for sure know that I think art class was probably one of my favorite places to be all throughout school and have memories of, you know, tempera, paint, smell, and <laughs> all that Oh, yeah. Stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I really have a lot of love and respect for art educators because I feel like art education has really come a long way too since I was in school because I know folks who do it now and it, I think it's completely different. But um, I think just encouraging, because school, school is so often just focused on academics. So really encouraging kiddos to be creative and follow their intuition and figure out who they are and um through the act of creating is so important, is so important. And we need space for that in all aspects of our lives. And um, after school, I, I got kind of discouraged um, by some experiences I have and sort of felt like I wasn't good enough. And I actually stopped making art for 20 oh, years. No. So I want to tell everyone that because I'm 43 and I only started doing this five years ago. Yeah. So um, it's not you're never too old or it's never too late in your life, you know, to develop a creative interest or pursuit, even if it's just for fun, like obviously you don't have to monetize it. But um, yeah. so I think people, and it's why I like to teach and work with adults so much too, because I think a lot of folks are sort of um, missing this in their, in their lives and they don't realize it until they try it. And then it's so fulfilling. So I just think that art and creativity and making and experimenting are, should be, a part of our everyday, you know, as much as possible. And that can be in any medium, it doesn't have to be weaving, but you know, yeah. in, in any way, yeah. Yeah, completely. And there's obviously so many ways to express ourselves. And sometimes we, we lose that, right? We get caught up in our day-to-day -day things we got to take care of and everything and don't set that time to just see, you know, follow our heart and see what we're all about and, and how we can express ourselves. So I love that too. And I, yeah. I also appreciate you sharing your story about only recently really getting into your business and your craft and, and what you do as, um, an artist, because that is really inspirational. I mean, there's constant change that can happen in a human's life. And it's nice to remember and see that it doesn't always have to be what you expect or what you anticipate being yeah, a path. You know? Totally. Yeah. Um, so let's just chat just a little bit more to those art educators, because as you know, us art teachers love incorporating um, current working artists into our curriculum, love chatting about artists that are kind of using using different interesting materials. Can you tell us about what kinds of maybe art lessons or conversations would be fun to have regarding your work? So if you were in front of a bunch of students, what would be some things you think that they, that they would want to know about you and your work? <laughs> That's such a good question. I'm not <laughs> sure. I'd be really curious to know. Yeah, like um, what kiddos would ask. Yeah, well, like I was telling you, for everybody yeah. watching, Sarah and I had a little chat before we did this, and I was saying it's my dream to be like a guest speaker in like an elementary school art class. So mm -hmm. just hit me up if you want a guest speaker. Girl, you you just opened up a can of a can of worms there because all oh, of no, our I teachers are like, yes. I well, I have kids, and I just I appreciate their perspective so much. So. Yes. Um, well, I think we can have great conversations about like color and, yeah. and mood and how it makes you feel. Um, and I think weaving to um, invites, you know, yeah, a conversation about art making that's not, um, that is more like three dimensional, working with tools. Um, but yeah, I don't know what, I have no idea what anyone was, but I'm super <laughs> open and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I would love to like teach young kids to, to do weaving because I think it's just a super fun activity and I've seen other classrooms that have done sort of like class class looms that have done like yes. classroom weaving projects and I, I think that's so fantastic like little collaborative weaving projects. oh yeah yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> well I I know you are an incredibly inspirational artist that can help make that happen for sure and I think I mean maybe my, some of my fellow art teachers in the group here can t help me think of what some of those little ones would probably ask but the kids love to ask about like when did how long does it take you to make something and like how like i see even a question here how do you yeah. decide on the colors and a lot about the technique sometimes can be really complex for them but reminding them 
it, it's really all about pattern and sort of feel, right? And and vibe, especially for something that can be a little more organic, like your work, Jen. It, it's really um, helpful for those kids to see it doesn't have to be perfectly structured. It doesn't have to be exactly how you anticipate, right? Yeah, definitely. That's something I talk about a lot with my own kids, too, is that idea of, like, recognizing that what's in your head isn't always what's going to come out on the paper, but that's part of the process and that everybody has a style and a way that they make art. Like when I was young, I always wanted to draw in a very realistic way and I've never really been able to. And I, it's, it's a very difficult skill that not everyone has, but I have my own style of drawing yeah. that is just fine, you know? So it's also about just accepting who you are, which is like part of a bigger. <laughs> bigger I was going to say that too, is but, that, yeah. that leads us to a very, uh, very great conversation too. And yeah. I think, you know, maybe that's part of what a lot of art educators hopefully put their their energy and their emphasis on is, of course, teaching our students how to be awesome humans through art making, right? So when you're teaching about weaving, we're we're really teaching about patience, right? And decision making and um, choices and intentionality and things like that, because that's, that's what happens when we make art. But it happens to come out through this beautiful piece that we've created by the end. Um, so I love I love your little like drops of character traits in there, too, because that's, that's how we, we how we how we hook the kids, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, in a second here, we're going to do one of our trivia questions um, so that somebody can win one of these super cool stickers from the art event. <laughs> um, and Sounds if anyone good. else has any more questions for Jen, go ahead and pop those into our chat here too. Um, I know I see, how did you decide on the color combination? We kind of chatted about that at the beginning a little bit, but if you want to just give us one more quick overhaul about like some of your color choices and how you decide, Jen, then um, I'll, I'll wrap it up with our final question here. Sure. I mean, it's such a bummer because I talk about this in my workshops too, but like, I don't actually know like a ton about color theory or anything. <laughs> so it's very hard for me to explain to other people how I do it because it's really, it's just intuitive. It's what I like. So I choose what I like. So that's what I sort of encourage folks to do too if they're making art is just choose what you like like what you're attracted to exactly um, and that can be enough if you want to know more about color theory there's you know lots of books <laughs> and you can look at a color wheel which can help you choose um but yeah I, I think it's just about like instincts and your gut and what makes you feel good and what moves you and yeah and everyone's different so some really? people think my art is ugly and some people really love it so yeah and, <laughs> it's and, and, and <laughs> oh, exactly. And we know that, that that's okay, right? Because yeah, we're totally. all just doing it for us. And that's the yeah. magic of having billions of people on the earth. There's 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 so yeah. many of us to, to, totally. to make a world. It all takes all kinds. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's just finish up with sort of just maybe some words of encouragement, some words, some parting words of advice. Um, as we move forward, you know, we're all kind of like trying to find our way trying to, to figure out what, what this year looked like and, and all these things that become so um, complex. But it's nice to just take a step back a little bit and reflect on, on a little bit of encouragement. So do you have any words of advice for us, words of encouragement as we move, as we move forward for our viewers? <laughs> well, I mean, I would encourage everybody to hang in there because this year has been rough um, on, you know, for everybody, some of us more than others. But um there's a lot of stuff going on. So take care of yourself. And for me, part of taking care of myself is having like a dedicated creative practice. It has been so good for my mental health. Um, if you can do it, I would advise you, you know, to do it and not monetize it and just have something that's like just for you that is enjoyable that you get joy from and satisfaction from. And you don't have to be good at it either. Like just do it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, but find something that makes you happy and sort of hang on to that right now, because I feel like we all need that little bit yeah. of hope and <laughs> optimism right now. Completely, yeah. completely. I love it. And it's, it's funny because I feel like that's, that's things you hear a lot, right? Is make sure you make time to be creative, make sure you make time for this. And it's like, feels like there's so many things you have to make time for, but sometimes the thing you need the most is the one that goes to the bottom of the list. And so um, notice how much that's going to help your mental health to yeah. intentionally make time, make time for your art. So thank you for that advice, Jen. Appreciate it for sure. And hopefully it resonates with some other people as well. I hope so. Um, <laughs> okay. So now on to our trivia question for this beautiful little rainbow sticker. So I'm going to ask a question. The first person to answer correctly in the chat, um, I will say your Instagram handle. 
And um, then you can message the Art of Ed and just say, hey, I won today and send me your address so I can go ahead and send you your sticker. Um, and then Jen, after our our chat here, I want to, I'm going to make sure to post a lot of things in the Instagram story for the Art of Ed about how to follow you and how to purchase your work. But could you just real quick right now tell us for those people that are wondering where they can buy your work and follow along with you? Yeah, you can uh, get in touch with me. I have a website. It's novamercury.com. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at novamercury. And uh, that's it. So I have an Etsy shop. All my work is only online. So you can contact me if you're interested in commission or I have available work in my shop most of the time, not always, and my weaving kit. So if you want to learn to weave too, I can help you with that. Perfect. I love it. I love it. You, go, you got everything we need. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Good, it's good. Um, okay, so those of you that would like your chance to win this awesome sticker, the question for you, which you need to answer in the chat is, make sure I say it right, what is Jen's Instagram handle, Nova Mercury, named after? So go ahead and type into the chat, what is the inspiration for the Instagram handle, Nova Mercury, for Jen's handle? What's fun, Jen, is like they see this 10 seconds after I say it. So that's why nobody's answering is because they're just <laughs> seeing it. Ah, Coach T, her daughter. Oh, everyone's getting there. There you go. Oh, see, now we got him. The first one. <laughs> All right. Art with Coach T is so speedy. Go ahead and message um, message the art of it. Oops, sorry. Got my chat in here. Um, and I will go ahead and send you that sticker. So. Jen, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. We love learning from you, and we will be saving this chat to the IGTV for the Art of Ed, so if anyone else wants to watch or share, you are welcome to. But thank you, be well, Jen, and we really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having me. It was such a great chat. I'm just going to say hi to my kids because they're watching. Yeah. Hi, Milo. Hi, Nova. <laughs> hi, guys. But thank you so much. This was so fun. And yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. I'm happy to chat. So, Amazing. You're the best. Thanks, Sarah. Yes, of course. Have a great night. You too. Bye. Bye.